Hi everybody. So in this section we're going to continue reviewing systems of linear equations. In the previous section we talked about solving graphically and now we're going to talk about solving algebraically. Okay, so first we're just going to remind you of the two methods that you have to solve algebraically. Okay. Okay, the first method to solve algebraically is substitution. So we're going to look at an example of this. Okay, so when you are solving um, algebra using substitution, Okay, you're going to isolate one of the variables in one of the equations. So we could either divide this equation by 2 to isolate this r, or we can divide this equation by 2 to isolate the w. Okay, now we're going to try to minimize the amount of work that we're doing here. So if you see here, if we divide by 2, we'll get a fraction here and a fraction here. Okay, we'd like to avoid that. But if we check, we're still going to get a fraction if we divide here. So it's not a huge difference in difficulty depending on what we divide. But here we'll only get one fraction, as in here we'll have two. So here I'm just going to divide both things by two. Okay. And then, like the name suggests, I am going to substitute into this equation for w. So I have 2r equals w, which is 7 minus 3 halves r plus 7. Okay, so now I'm just going to combine like terms. 7 plus 7 is 14. Okay, now I'm going to combine these two terms by adding 3 halves r to both sides. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal here. Okay, so times 2 over 7 and times 2 over 7. Okay, so here they're going to cancel and we're just going to get 1r. And here the 14 cancels with the 7. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, and now I still need... So remember, now I still need to get my value of w, okay? So this is a common mistake. Students will stop halfway through having only gotten the value for the first variable, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and plug in here. Okay, so I'm plugging into this equation, and I'm using my value 4 for r, okay? So 3 halves times 4 is going to be 6. So I'm just going to get my value 1, okay? Now I commonly get the question with this textbook, if you're using an ordered pair and they're not x and y, how do you order them? So you just do it alphabetically. Okay, so you would have r comma w, okay? So if you're going to list your answer as an ordered pair, this would be 4 comma 1. You could also, just as we saw in the last section, just say r equals 4, w equals 1, and box your answer like that. Okay? Now, let's talk about, again, consistent, inconsistent, dependent, and independent. Okay? So we saw that there was a solution. Here it is. So that means that we are consistent. Okay? Remember, consistent just means there is a solution. Inconsistent means there's no solutions, okay? And then anytime you have two equations that are totally different, like these two, okay, then that is an independent system. Okay, we will see in another example what a dependent system looks like, but when you have two totally different equations, that's gonna be independent, okay? All right, 
So let's see an example of the other method to solve algebraically. Okay, this method is sometimes called elimination. The method is solved, sometimes called combinations. Those names both refer to the same method, okay? Okay, so here, okay, we're going to try to line up so either x or y has coefficients that are opposites, right? So for example, 4 and negative 4 are opposites. So we want these to be opposites, and we're going to do that by multiplying by a constant, okay? So we could make this 6 and negative 6, right? We're looking for the least common multiple of 2 and 3. Or we could make this 15, negative 15 and positive 15 if we're looking for the least common multiple of 3 and 5. Okay, so just because of number size, I'm going to do times 3 and times 2, but you certainly could use 5 and 3 also. Okay, so when I multiply this whole equation by 3, I'm going to get 6x minus 9y equals 9. Okay, and when I multiply the whole second equation by 2, I'm going to get negative 6x plus 10y equals negative 12, okay? And this is the point, right? Now we have six and negative six. So when you add these two together, that's the combination part, you're combining them, right? Add them together, six plus negative six is zero. And that's why it's called elimination, is because you're eliminating one of the variables, okay? So six plus negative six, zero. Negative nine plus 10y is one y. Okay, 9 plus negative 12 is negative 3. Okay, so now we have a value for y, and we're just going to get a value for x by plugging this in. You could plug it into either one of these equations. It absolutely doesn't matter. I'm just going to use the first one. Okay, so I'm plugging into that very first equation, 2x minus 3y. Okay, and I'm plugging in my y value, negative 3. Okay, so this will give me 2x plus 9 equals 3. Okay, so x is also negative 3. Okay, now I'm going to format my answer, negative 3 comma negative 3. Okay, all right, so hopefully that refreshes your memory. Oh, let's talk about consistent, inconsistent, dependent, and independent. Okay, so again, we got a solution, so this means we're consistent. Okay, and we had two totally different equations, which means it's independent. Okay, all right. Now let's look at an example where we can solve using either method. Okay, so when the directions say solve algebraically, that can mean use substitution or use combinations or elimination. That's your choice. The only thing you can't do here is you can't use a graph to solve. Okay, so let's look at our first example. Okay, now you could really use either method here, okay? I'm going to do combinations because I think that's the um, technique that students need to see more examples of, but you would be free to use substitution here, okay? Now, if I want to make this 6 and negative 6, right? Again, I'm looking for the least common multiple of 2 and 3. I'm going to have to multiply both of these. 
Here, if I'm looking for the least common multiple of negative 1 and 10, I really only have to multiply the top one. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to multiply this by 10. Okay, so that will give me 20q minus 10p equals 10. Okay, and then here I'm just going to copy my equation down. So 3q plus 10p equals negative 1. Okay, so now I'm going to combine them, right? 20q plus 3q is 23q. Negative 10p plus positive 10p is 0, right? That's the elimination part. 10 plus negative 1 is 9, okay? And I'm going to divide to give me my answer. Okay, and I am absolutely going to leave this in fraction form, okay? Now I still have to find my value for p, okay? So to me, if we're looking for computational ease, right, we're looking for something that's easy to do, it looks like it's gonna be easier to solve for p in this first equation. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug into the first equation. Okay. All right. So 2 times, 23, two times 9 over 23 is 18 over 23. So now I'll subtract 18 over 23 from both sides. OK. And now I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1, or divide both sides by negative 1. Okay, all right, so now I have my two answers, right, for P and Q, and again, just like I said previously, you're going to just put them in alphabetical order, so P and then Q, so I'll get 5 over 23, okay, 9 over 23, okay. Let's look at part B of this example. Oh, before we do that, consistent, inconsistent, dependent, independent. Okay, so there is a solution, so we know it's consistent. Okay, two totally different equations, we know it's independent. Okay, all right. So here's this, and then our second equation is Okay, so if I want to avoid um, fractions here, right, you can see if I divide this by 6, I'm going to get fractions. If I divide it by 2, I'm going to get fractions. Same thing here. If I divide by 12, I'll get fractions. If I divide by 4, I'll get a fraction here. Okay, so you are welcome to do that and use substitution, or you can use elimination or combinations. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put this in standard form by putting both of the variable terms on the left. Okay, and then if I want to use elimination, I can see here that I can multiply by negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to do my first equation and I'm going to multiply it by negative 2. Okay, so that will give me negative 12p minus 4q equals negative 2. Okay, and then I'm just going to copy my second equation. So 12p plus 4q equals 2. Okay, and now I'm going to add them together. Negative 12p plus 12p is 0. Negative 4q plus 4q is 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Okay, now What's happened here is two different things. So all variables are gone.
okay? So that's the first thing that should signal you to it not being a normal problem, okay? And then we have a true statement. Okay, so when you have those two things, it will tell you that there are infinite solutions. Okay. All right. So in this example, let's talk about consistent, inconsistent, dependent, and independent. Okay. Now, if there's infinite solutions, there's certainly solutions. So that means this is consistent. Okay. Now, if you look at this stage, you can see that these two equations are not really independent equations, right? These equations are multiples of one another. And this is a perfect example of a system that's dependent. Okay, so again, you can see that the infinite solutions and the dependent go together. Okay, we saw that with the graphing and you can see it here. Okay. All right, let's see the last example from this, well, the last part of this example. Okay, so again, I'm gonna use combinations here. Okay, and I'm just gonna make these variables eliminate. So I'm gonna multiply by negative two. Okay, so here I'm just gonna copy my equation. And here I'm gonna multiply by negative two. Okay, so negative two u plus positive two u is zero. Negative 6v plus positive 6v is 0, okay? And then 6 plus negative 4 is 2, okay? So the same thing happened in terms of all variables are eliminated. Okay, but what's different about this is now we have a false statement. Okay, zero equals two, that's obviously false, okay? So in this case, we would say there are no solutions. Okay. All right, so when we talk about consistent and inconsistent, if there's no solutions, this is inconsistent. Okay, but the two equations are different right? You can see they're not multiples of one another. They're totally different, okay? So that means that they are independent. Okay, again, no solution and inconsistent both mean exactly the same thing, okay? All right, now that we've reviewed the algebraic methods and our vocab, okay, let's look at some applied examples. Okay, Carmela has $1,200 invested in two stocks. One returns 8% per year and the other returns 12% per year. Okay, the income from the 8% stock is $3 more than the income from the 12% stock. Okay, so that's our setup. So part A says write a system of equations. Okay, so first we're gonna decide on what our variables are. Okay, so there's two different amounts. It says that overall she invested $1,200, but we don't know how much she invested in the first one versus how much she invested in the second one. Okay, so I'm gonna say X is the amount invested at 8%. Okay, and then we'll say Y is the amount invested at 12%, okay? Remember, it is super important to tell me what your variables stand for, okay? So then right away, I can say that one of my equations is gonna be about the total amount invested, okay? So the total amount invested, x plus y, is gonna be that $1,200 from the problem, okay? 
Now, the second part is going to come from here when it says the income from the 8% stock is $3 more than the income from the 12% stock. Okay, so that's what's going to help us write our second problem. Okay, so I'm going to ask us to remember that the income from an investment is um, the principal, right, the initial investment times the rate times the time. Okay, so remember income, initial investment, rate, and time. So the time is one for both of these. Okay, so for the first one, right, we have the income, and then we have the initial amount, which is X, and the rate, which is 8% or 0 0.08. Sorry, I'll write that more clearly, 0 0.08. Okay, and again, the time is one, one year. Now for the 12%, okay, the income we still don't know, okay, probably different. The initial investment now is Y, okay, the rate is 12% or 0.12, and the time is one, okay. So it's saying this amount, I, Okay, I1 is $3 more than this amount, $3 more than I2, okay? And I'm just going to translate that into the variables that we have with X and Y, okay? So I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to go on a different piece of paper. Okay, so we had I1 is 3 plus I2. Okay, and we had I1 is 0 0.08 times X. Okay, and I2 was 0.12 times Y. Okay, so overall our equations are this, X plus Y equals 1200. Okay, and then 0 0.08 X equals 3 plus 0 0.12 Y. So here's our system of equations. Okay, so for part B, it says how much did she invest in each? Okay, so now we're going to solve our system of equations. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put this into standard form by subtracting. Okay. So I get 0 0.08x minus 0.12y equals 3. Okay. So now, again, you could potentially use substitution, but I think combinations is going to be easier for this example just because of the decimals. Okay. So I'm going to multiply this by uh, minus 0 0.08. Okay. So I'll get minus 0.08x minus 0.08y equals 1200 times negative 0 0.08. Okay, so I'm going to grab my calculator. And I get 96. negative 96. Okay. And here I'm just going to copy. Okay. I'm going to add these together. Negative 0.08x plus 0.08x is 0. This is going to give me negative 0.2y. Okay. And this is going to give me negative 93. Okay. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 0.2. Okay, and I get 460. Okay, now again, I still have to solve for x. If you look at these two equations, I think in this example, it is much easier to plug into the first one. Okay, so I have x 
plus y, which is 465, equals 1200. Okay, and that gives me that x is 735. Okay, so it's a word problem, so I'm going to write out my solution. So I would say she invested... Seven thirty-five at eight percent, and four sixty-five at twelve percent. Okay, and that would be the right format for my answer. Because it's a word problem, putting this in an ordered pair wouldn't really make sense. Okay, so make sure that you're matching your solution type to the question type. Okay, we're gonna do one more. Or, uh, word problem. Okay. A 9,000 seat amphitheater has tickets for sale for $32 and $62. A sellout performance generates a revenue of $382,500. Okay. And, oops, I copied the question wrong. This would make my life very difficult. It's supposed to be three. $35, okay, and $62. I knew that sounded wrong, okay. Um, a sellout performance generates a revenue of $382,500. How many tickets are sold at each price? Okay, so again, the first thing I'm gonna do is name my variables, okay? So this is gonna be, X is gonna be the number of tickets sold at $35. Okay, and Y is going to be the number of tickets sold at $62. Okay, now we know that the total number of tickets sold when we add these two together is going to be 9,000. Okay, and then we're going to write an equation about the cost. Okay, so we have $35 per ticket times the number of tickets, okay, plus $62 per ticket times the number of tickets is gonna be the total revenue. So 382,500, okay? So here's our two equations with our variables, okay? Now you could easily use substitution or combinations. By now you guys know I prefer combinations, okay? So I'm gonna multiply this by negative 35, okay? You could also multiply by negative 62 just as easily. Okay, so I'll get negative 35x minus 35y equals, and then I'm gonna do 9,000 times 35, okay? So I know it's negative. And I get 315,000 even. Okay, and now I'm just gonna copy my second equation. 35x plus 62y equals 382,5. Okay, now I'm gonna add these together or combine them. This gives me zero, okay? 62 minus 35 is 27 equals, okay, and then I'm going to do these two added together. So I should get 6, 67,500, okay, which I'm going to divide by 27. Okay, and I get 2,500. Okay, again, I'm not gonna forget to solve for x, okay? So it's definitely gonna be easier to plug into x plus y equals 9,000. So I'll get x plus y equals 9,000, and this will let me solve for x. So I get 6,500, okay? And again, I'm gonna write my sentence answer, okay? So they sell 6,500 tickets at 
$35 and 2,500 tickets at $62. Okay, so I hope this section gave you a little bit of review about substitution and combinations, and then also got to show you some word problems using these. Uh, I think that's it, so I'll see you guys soon.